G'day, my name is Michael. I'm working with the Headwork, Headworks team here today on the Cotter Dam doing a foreshore inspection. Today we're inspecting our uh, log boom here, which is this orange uh, piece of infrastructure you can see across the water. Log boom extends down into the water profile with a metal mesh, and that's to stop logs interfering with our infrastructure. The reason for that is to protect our dam wall, our intake tower, where we can extract the water from, and our destratification units which are like these big egg, egg beaters which are mixing the water all the way down through the profile so we've got sufficient dissolved oxygen occurring so to protect our Macquarie perch because we've got really good biodiversity here and it acts like, like almost like green kidneys to give the, the best raw water quality we can have in our catchment. What you see behind me regenerating on these banks are macrophytes. So they're water plants that can provide habitat uh, for our local biodiversity, particularly Macquarie perch which are an endangered species here. Uh, and when we enlarged the Cotter Dam, uh, we made sure we put in about seven kilometres of rocky reef habitat. So to make sure that we provided habitat for these fish to shelter while the dam filled and enlarged and then, then resettled with these vegetation on the sides so they could be protected from predators like cormorants that would otherwise predate on them. Behind me is a dissolved oxygen buoy um, and that gives us uh, direct access to know the dissolved oxygen levels in the dam. And if they get too low, that means that fish can come up to the surface and be predated upon, upon uh, by um, predators such as um, cormorants and predatory birds and stuff. So we really try to monitor the, the water quality in the DO and the dam to ensure the conservation of these fish species. Behind me, you can see the Cotter River coming into the very top of the Cotter Reservoir. You can also hear it too. It's not something many people get to see uh, and it's pretty exciting. It's not only a critical part of Canberra's water supply and water security, but it's also critical for our Macquarie perch, which is an endangered species endemic to this area uh, and a thriving population in the Cotter Reservoir. And each year in about November, these fish, they come up to the top of the reservoir and they need to go up this very river to in order to spawn. And so they'll find what they call riffle habitat, these small rocks uh, with water flowing over the top. So you often see a little white, white water over the top uh, and they'll lay the eggs amongst those rocks and get them fertilised and, and then the young will come back down into the river, into the reservoir later on. And that's why we have a flourishing population. The surrounding landscape is called the Lower Cotter Catchment and that catchment was um, severely impacted by fire in 2003. And you see the landscape, it has a lot of shrubs and, and small eucalyptus growing back. And that's really the assistance of the, the land managers and a lot of work by Greening Australia that effectively put in what was the biggest landscape regenerative practice that has kind of ever been in Australia, where they ch changed the landscape from a forestry commercial landscape into a natural regenerative um, eucalyptus wooded landscape. I'm out here on what should be the Cotter Reservoir, which is actually behind me. We're at the confluence with Pierce's Creek. And so for those who might be aware, it's where we have various recreation activities in a pine forest monoculture. Uh, and that includes things like motorbiking. Uh, and so upstream, we now have some erosive activity that occurs. So soil will wash downstream and will deposit in the reservoir. Obviously, that's not what we want uh, because that, that soil, uh, it can have nutrients attached with it that then become mobilised in the water and can lead to blue-green algae. Uh, we then also have some of our reservoir water capacity being taken up by dirt. Um, and I was particularly surprised coming out here this morning in the lower aquatic catchment. Uh, it looks beautiful and pristine to then find this just over here in the confluence of the river. So we're even getting some pollution in our, in our reservoir, uh, which is very surprising. And so we've got a source water protection program where we collaborate with our land custodians like Parks and Conservation Service, uh, our farmers, uh, our councils and other land managers to make sure that we have appropriate activities in our catchment, protect our beautiful drinking water supply. So behind me is the Cotter River uh, flowing into the Cotter Reservoir and uh, those flows are provided uh, as e-flows which are environmental flows. Um, those flows work to keep the, the aquatic ecosystem healthy and thriving and they're controlled as well by Icon Water. Um, and there's a lot of work that goes in the background with um, what, how much those flows will be and the results from the macroinvertebrates and the fish and the um, water quality from those flows as well. So that's how we keep the ecosystem thriving and that's how we keep a, um, a good environment for those endangered fish. 
such as Macquarie perch and the blackfish um, in the Cotter Reservoir. I'm standing at the inlet where Pierce's Creek enters the Cotter Reservoir. Um, beautiful part of the world and it's really important that it continues to stay um, beautiful and fresh and pristine the way it is because this uh, part of the world helps protect our drinking water and there are certain rules that um, need to be abided by in order to continue these protections. Um, that includes things like not fishing at the reservoir or, or at least abiding by the fishing rules above the reservoir, um, not to bring your dog inside the lower aquatic catchment, uh, not, to do, not to light any fires or camp nearby. Um, it's really an area that's protected um, from people and the harmful impacts from such viruses such as Phytophthora, EHN virus, um, introduced fish would, would also have a really negative impact upon our native fish species here. So it's really important that if you're coming to the lower aquatic catchment to abide by those rules um, in order to protect this catchment uh, and protect our drinking water.